Clembuterol. Absolutely the most widely abused ped in the world across women and men. It's abused by all athletes in the world. NHL, boxing, soccer, cycling athletes, MLB, many violations, swimmers, track and field, fencing. Without question, this is the most classic abused drug utilized by women in the fitness across bodybuilding and physique and figure, without question. It's also abused in weight loss markets and by celebrities, no names mentioned. Multiple celebrities have been written up in the tabloids for using clenbuterol and ending up in the emergency room. So in the summary for this video, I'll discuss the amazing history and limited medical uses of clenbuterol, hydrochloride. We'll talk about the pharmacology and structure and the mechanism of action that makes this a fat burner and a muscle builder. And of course, the amazing side effects that put the death nail and the limitation on this drug. With no further ado, the history of clenbuterol hydrochloride. Patented in 1967, it came onto the actual medical market in 1977 as a bronchodilator for asthma in humans. Never allowed to come on the actual market in America for human use. But in 1998, Bollringer Ingelheim produced venti pulmon syrup only for horses. And what's amazing is that the federal government years later in America realized that they'll limit it only for horse use, for asthma, funny enough, and breathing issues, respiratory issues in horses, and they want to make sure it was banned in livestock and cattle because there were case studies of people outside America ingesting cattle that had used clenbuterol and they had side effects and they ended up in the hospital. So that's incredible. In America, it's not a controlled drug. It's not a prescribed drug, so it can't be a controlled drug. But it is banned by, by the IOC. Pharmacology and structure of clenbuterol. It's a beta-2 adrenergic agonist. It's similar in structure to epinephrine, adrenaline, and salbutamol, which is a bronchodilator, an asthma drug. Although clenbuterol is much more potent and much more long-acting. So, as a bronchodilator, it dilates and relieves the smooth muscles in the bronchial tree when someone's having an asthma attack. It's definitely thermogenic. It works in two regions as a thermogenic agent. It works in the CNS by stimulating thermogenic hypothalamic regulation through the nuclei that are there. It stimulates that area. And with that, you get an increase in systemic temperature. It also works directly in adipose tissue throughout the body, increasing free fatty acid burn-off and liberation, and it burns and atrophies adipose tissue fat cells. The anabolic mechanism of action is questionable, although I think it's true. And if you look for, beyond the anecdotes that people say it burns fat, or everyone's gonna agree it burns fat, there's no question, thermogenic and it burns fat. But is it, does it build muscle, skeletal muscle? Well, it's used so often with other anabolic agents, it's very hard to, very, to determine. And there's, no, there's obviously no real randomized, double-blinded prospective studies on this, so it's all going to be anecdotal. Now, the data supports, the animal data does support that there has been research done in regard to Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And in the lab, it appeared like it did work in shifting over on a DNA level fiber type. And there is evidence in the 1990s, there's a variety of studies that supported that it is anabolic. But for some reason it was not pursued, and I don't really know why, probably because of the balance and the risks of the side effects. And that brings me to the side effects. So the limitation of this drug is absolutely secondary to the side effects. The number one side effect is going to be the heart rate. 
This medication, even in the tiny initial dose, will increase heart rate on people. And I've heard anecdotes of heart rates over 180 beats per minute, palpitations, uh, sending people to the ER. And I do have several stories that I've heard people popping into atrial fibrillation, which is an SVT type uh, arrhythmia. Uh, and it's uh, potentially dangerous. For young people don't really have AFib, so it's very unusual. And these were young individuals who used it. And even one story of a man years ago who told me that he was in AFib in the hospital and they initially broke him out with the medicines. They watched him in the hospital and in the post period, he would not stay inside his rhythm and they uh, moved to uh, a electrophysiological procedure called an ablation, pulmonary vein ablation. And it usually works uh, once or it may have to be done twice. This man underwent three times of pulmonary vein electrophysiologic ablation for chronic atrial fibrillation. And it, he never popped out. He's now chronically in AFib and he's on medication for heart rate and anticoagulation control. Now, the EP cardiologist, electrophysiology expert cardiologists have told him that this was secondary to permanent scarring from clenbuterol. There's some case studies on this. It's uncommon, but there is a case study for you. No question it causes palpitations. People end up uh, going to the ER. The clen shakes, clen shakes. It's a beta adrenergic agonist. So it's gonna be just like epinephrine, adrenaline, like you've had a fight or you're very scared from an accident or a stage fright. You're gonna have shakes. Your voice is gonna shake. Um, there's no question. Nausea. It definitely will cause uh, disturbances in electrolytes. I've seen it, and classically potassium, where people can actually pass out, or maybe having low potassium, it affects the, the cardiovascular system, obviously, the electrical system. Be very careful. On the CNS, directly, it has insomnia effects, nervousness, and I've seen several cases where people that have manic uh, bipolar, they're bipolar and they have manic depression, that this is stimulated episodes of mania. And again, people end up in the emergency room. The amazing way the underground gets around this is uh, for educational purposes only, the, the dose adjustments, they start low and they go. They start low with low pills, low doses, and they'll take X amount and they'll taper up and then they'll stop and then they'll hold for periods of days on, days off, because there is such a quick down regulation and a tolerance to this. Classic tolerance is built with some of these medications, classically clenbuterol, the beta adrenergic, adrenergic agonists. So you'll hear people listening to their gurus stepping up on doses, taking breaks. Another amazing thing is uh, that they use either concurrently or in the off period antihistamines to upregulate the receptors. This is amazing. This is stuff that doctors have never even really known. I didn't realize this until I heard it from my patients years ago. And very dangerously, these medicines are all in the underground. And what I heard years ago was there is a underground type of clenbuterol called superclen. It's 200 micrograms per pill. 200 micrograms. If you take one of those pills, you're going to end up in the emergency room. And if you have unstable plaque in your artery, or if you have a destabilized electrical system for whatever reason in your heart, you're going to die. You could potentially die. Uh, and this is 200 micrograms per pill. So this is cut in quarters to use such small doses itself for 50 micrograms. And it's dangerous. This is dangerous. Be very careful with this. Don't use this drug. Don't use any of these drugs. I hear so many bad things about all these drugs and they regret them. And I have to bring this to people's attention and that's why I'm doing these videos. Please be very careful and I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.